we have been trying to understand the theory of business or the theory of firm and as a first step we have been looking at production and cost we examined it in the short run and in this video what we'll do is we'll start looking at it from the long run perspective we know in the long run all variables are treated as all inputs are treated as variable or that means the management can change all or any of the inputs and the production function we have been representing in a general form is q equals flk where q is the quantity of output f stands for function l is labor and k is capital and cap by capital we mean all non labor inputs so when we are looking at the long run the businesses or the management can change l or and k they can change anything now before we get into a specific form of a production function let us look at the definitions of productivity how do we measure it because businesses are very interested in looking at productivity whether it is in the short run or in the long run and the concept we use to understand productivity in the long run is called returns to scale in the long run since all variables can change uh, that means when we look at the productivity what we are looking at is essentially total factor productivity or total productivity of all inputs taken together and the way we do this is we ask the question <clears throat> by how much does output change or by how much percent does output change when we increase all inputs equally proportionately for example we increase labor by 100% and capital by 100% so when we increase labor and capital each by 100% by how much does output increase and when we find that output increases by more than 100% this situation in a way reflects increase in productivity and this is what we call increasing returns to scale so what is increasing returns to scale when you increase labor and capital by 100% each output increases by more than 100% it's called increasing returns to scale and abbreviated as irs another possibility and it all depends on a firm's experiences when you increase labor and capital by 100% output increases exactly by 100% or in other words there is no change in productivity and this situation is referred to as constant returns to scale and abbreviated as crs another possibility that we may find is when we increase labor and capital each by 100% output increases by less than 100% when we have this situation that means there's a decrease in total factor productivity and this situation is referred to as a situation of decreasing returns to scale or drs so this is how we measure total factor productivity and we believe when the firm is smaller initially what we are likely to see is increasing returns to scale and the reason why this happens is because of division of labor and specialization you break a production process into smaller parts and what happens as you initially increase or produce output you become more and more efficient because each worker is now working on a narrowly defined task and so we witness an increase in productivity and this is followed by no change in productivity so if you have 10 machines 10 workers you double everything output also doubles constant returns to scale and constant returns to scale is followed by decreasing returns to scale when the firm becomes extremely large it becomes more and more complicated to 
coordinate different activities or it is too large for its own good and that's where we start seeing decrease in productivity or decreasing returns to scale <clears throat> So this is what we believe. This is a sequence followed by most of the businesses. Initially, we are likely to see an increase in productivity. And then output as output increases further, we may see CRS or constant returns to scale and then decreasing returns to scale. <clears throat> now, till what level of output will we see increasing returns or constant returns or decreasing returns? That depends on the nature of the industry and that is something you should keep in mind or, or in other words, it's just an empirical question. Now let us look at a specific production function which is very popular in economics and the reason why it is so popular is because it's mathematically very elegant, it has very nice mathematical properties and it has been found to be empirically useful or can be applied to real world situation fairly easily and this is called the Cobb Douglas production function due to two mathematicians slash economists Cobb and Douglas. The way this wrote this down is Q which is the quantity of output equals A L raised to the power alpha K raised to the power beta where Q represents quantity of output. A is called the technology coefficient. L represents units of labor. K is units of capital. Now, the exponent associated with the labor term, alpha, this represents elasticity of output with respect to labor. And you know about elasticity. And what will be elasticity of output with respect to labor? It will simply be percent change, triangle represents change, in quantity divided by percent change in labor. And this will be, this is how we would get elasticity of output with respect to labor. In a similar way, Beta, which is the exponent associated with capital, the other input. This is measured as percent change in quantity of output divided by percent change in capital. So this is how Cobb Douglas production function is written. And you should know each of these letters what they mean. Now an interesting property of Cobb Douglas production function is when you sum up the exponents which is alpha plus beta and if on your own you found this to be greater than one the sum of those exponents alpha and beta to be greater than one in such a case what we will get is increasing returns to scale. If on the other hand the sum of exponents or alpha plus beta equals 1. What we will have is constant returns to scale. And if the sum of exponents happens to be less than 1, then what we have is decreasing returns to scale. So by just summing up the exponents, we can figure out whether the firm or an economy or a business is undergoing increasing returns to scale or seeing increase in productivity or constant returns to scale or decrease in productivity. <clears throat> now, as an example, consider the following Cobb Douglas production functions. Look at the first one. What is the sum of exponents? It's 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5. And this adds up to 1.3. And this is greater than 1. And so we know this represents, this particular one represents increasing returns to scale. <clears throat> what about number two? The sum of exponents is alpha plus one minus alpha, and this equals one. And the sum of exponents is one. That means what we are looking at 
is decreasing constant returns to scale. Now look at this production function. This is a different representation of a production function as compared to the one that we sh I showed on the previous slide. In the previous slide, the inputs are multiplied with each other, or in other words, it's a multiplicative form of a production function. In this case, the third case, what you find is inputs are added. So this is a different expression. And so the rules that I've just stated will not apply to this particular one, which is the third one. So when you see something like this, the best way to deal with it is just put, plug in some numbers and see what happens. For example, if I initially assume k equals l equals 1, what will be the output produced? It will be 15. If you double all inputs, for example, l equals k equals 2, what happens to output? It becomes 30. Or in other words, when you double inputs, output doubles. So the third case must be an example of constant returns to scale. Let me write down the Cobb-Douglas production once again. Q equals A, L, alpha, K, beta. Now, this function was used to estimate quantity of output or income for the U.S. by an economist named Dennison. And what he looked at is the first part of the 20th century. So what we are looking at is the 1900s. And this is a time period in which the U.S. became number one economic power in the world, or the income of this country grew at a tremendous pace. And so Denison tried to explain what happened in the U.S. when its income increased significantly. And what he found is really interesting. He found that increase in income or increase in output for the U.S., a small part of it could be explained by increase in number of workers. And if you're a student of history, you know this was a time period, 1900s, the first part where the, we received a large number of immigrants from Europe, and so we received a larger number of workers. And this was also the time period in which industrialization was being embraced by the entire economy, or it was spreading to the entire economy, or industrial sector output was increasing big time. So there was an increase in K as well. So some pro proportion of increase in output could be explained by increase in number of workers and increase in number of machines. But what is important or interesting about his study is he found this coefficient A or this letter A which represents the technology coefficient was a very important contributor to an increase in output of the U.S. or increase in income of the U.S. And when we use the term technology coefficient, what we have in mind is not just the engineering part, but also the style of management. So how did U.S. become so rich over time? A part of it could be explained by increases in number of workers and increase in number of capital. But most of it could be explained by the technology coefficient. And so if a country wants to become richer over time, it has to be more innovative, not in just in terms of engineering aspects, but also in terms of style of management and so on. So this is a general overview of the production function in the long run. In the next video, what we do is we look at isoquants or the relationship between output, labor, and capital.